This is Star Talk. This is from Yawa, and she says, a Queens, New York native asking, isn't there a fundamental difference between genetically modified foods and the cultivation of foods? Uh, Is there a fundamental difference? Uh, so I think by cultivation, she I think she means traditional hybridizing, mm -hmm. where you would uh, take the uh, pollen from one plant, shake it onto the eggs, the ova of another plant. And see what happens. And you get a hybrid, yeah. Mm -hmm. So George Washington is That's, said to have done this. Sounds sexy. Uh, it is, literally. That sounds no, sexy, uh, baby. No, no, th this is what happened in nature. We have two sexes, yeah, okay. males and females. Okay. But, uh, uh, but in uh, fungi, it right. is believed certain species have hundreds of sex types. Aha. Uh -huh. And that's a whole other deal out there in the land of fungus. So what happens Clearly is, in the land of fungus. fungus so of. humans have been hybridizing within species, shaking pollen from one plant onto the eggs of another. Okay. For centuries, shake it, baby. But we found out that not only in nature, not only do humans now biotechnologists have the ability to take genes from one species and insert them into another. For example, the Bacillus thuringiensis bacterium gene into the corn okay. or the soybean, making BT soybeans, BT corn, right? Which the corn borer eats the protein from the barren, uh, Bacillus thuringiensis uh, crystallizes. In the corn borer's gut, and the corn borer it dies. What? So that's right. That's the deal. So that's why the corn borer is not a problem anymore. Instead of fighting these or these pests, so you let the plant do the fighting for right. you. Instead of fighting the pests with chemicals of right. death, we're uh, empowering death. the plant to do it on that's its right. own. That's right. And yeah. so you do it as carefully as you can, to be sure. But the other thing that was discovered recently, as I mentioned in our recent show is that uh, sweet potatoes, in this way of example, Yeah, this happened naturally. A virus got its genes in sweet potatoes, the ones that we know and love. Mm -hmm. And we supported that as cultivators of sweet potatoes and encouraged that in nature. So it happens in nature, and now we're doing it uh, scientifically or biotechnologically. And the difference really becomes blurry, uh, whether it's like, natural or humans yeah, are doing right, it. Right, because all we're kind of doing is mimicking what nature has already well, that's done. The claim. Yeah, so the whole thing, though, your concern is if you're doing it so fast that you're going to do something in the ecosystem that nobody anticipated. Mm -hmm. And you don't want the so-called knock-on or unintended consequences. Right. And the classic like example lizard of this, babies or something like, you know. Uh, yes. Yeah. Like the Jurassic Park. That's what uh, I'm saying. <laughs> Lizard babies uh, or, uh, 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 you know, uh, or an intelligent Jurassic, dinosaur. Yes. Named Charlie, <laughs> who leads us all sorts of trouble with that. Right. Uh, that, and the unintended consequence that really did happen in nature through humans, we developed this, we, people developed this herbicide called glyphosate. Kills all the weeds, kills all of everything. Everything. Except the plants that have this cool gene in them that allows them to grow right through it. Uh, we also killed the milkweed. And the milkweed, which I now prefer to call milk flower, oh. is what, yes, is what the monarch butterflies rely on. Oh, really? Yeah. So we accidentally have decimated uh, the monarch butterfly population reduced it over the last two decades by 90%. Which is probably a good thing because when they flap their wings over here, it causes a pretty bad storm in Japan. Oh, this is the uh, butterfly effect. <laughs> That's but seriously. I, it's, go ahead. It's brilliant, Chuck. <laughs> really, really good. Really brilliant. Uh, so the thing is, you don't want that where you're accidentally wiping out a pollinator, right. potential pollinator species. Right. So I went to the meeting in Minneapolis, the Monarch Venture, where they got the crazy bleeding heart liberal hippies. Okay. Like me. Uh, and the corporate pigs, like ConAgra, Monsanto, Dow Pioneer. Boo. Well, anyway, they all got together. They all want to bring monarchs back. And they believe that they can by creating this so-called hopscotch highway of milk flowers. Gotcha. Growing these milkweeds on purpose. Right. In certain tracts of land on the flyways that the monarchs exploit getting north and south. So, and along their migration path, you purposely put this milk flower 
they have a monarch filling station from north to That's south. It. That's it. And along the way, they're doing a the little butterfly horizontal mambo, and we get more and more monarchs. That's right. So they're, they're, the prediction of the venture, this group that met in Minneapolis, diverse group, people that you would not think getting along are all in this, I got to say, as an observer, they're all in this getting along. They believe that this year the monarch population will go back up. Wow. One test is worth a thousand expert opinions. So stay tuned and let's see if the monarchs come back. Let's there you take go. a look. All right, people. There you have it. This is Star Talk. 